Uh, I'm Vikram Apia. Uh, I work at the Imaging R&D Lab at Texas Instruments, and I'll be giving a talk on uh, a paper we wrote about uh, fully automatic 2D to 3D conversion using high-level features. Uh, so here's a brief introduction of what 2D to 3D conversion is. So if you have, okay. so, uh, if you have a scene that is being uh, viewed by an observer, the left and the right I have two different viewpoints. And our brain takes these two viewpoints and fuses them together to give us 3D depth of the scene. So uh, the problem of 2D to 3D conversion is that if you have a 2D image, uh, you would want to create two different viewpoints so that uh, when seen by a viewer using an anaglyph, he can simulate the effect of having a left and a right eye view of the scene. And uh, once you have that, uh, you create a 3D model of the scene. So this model here is actually taking this image, and I just ran it through my algorithm here and created a 3D scene. Uh, I'll have some more examples later in the talk. Uh, so let me quickly jump to the overview of the talk. Uh, so the basic 2D to 3D conversion algorithm uh, takes a single 2D image. And based on some uh, image features and some local tra uh, training that we did, uh, we create the image into a pseudo depth map. So we used some uh, low-level features like gradient and location. We analyzed a few different features, and we narrowed it down to gradient and location being the most suitable one for this task. And then on top of that, we uh, add some high-level features like faces, sky, and foliage, trying to detect these in the scene and enforce some more depth cues uh, to make the depth map more realistic. And once we have the depth map, uh, we do a view synthesis, which is basically taking the 2D image that you have and creating two different views, uh, the left and the right view. Uh, to be presented for a 3D uh, system. So uh, this is like a brief overview of the algorithm, and I'll go through in little more detail in each of these topics as I go forward. Uh, so for training, what we did was we took a 3D camera, the Fuji 3D camera. We captured multiple consumer images. And we used um, the segment-based adaptive belief propagation method to create depth maps or disparity maps from these images. Uh, so the idea is we were trying to create uh, 3D images from still existing consumer 2D images. So we captured 3D images with a consumer camera. And we are trying to analyze different kinds of consumer scenes and create 3D for uh, such scenes. So once we have multiple of these training images, we needed to find correlation between the disparity map that we generated in the original image. Uh, so for that, we classified our training images into three different categories. We basically uh, divided our Im image into three different regions, uh, and we analyzed the amount of gradient in each of these regions. So we are making some assumptions about the scene uh, here. Uh, the assumptions are that the more gradients or the more texture there is in an object, it is closer to the camera, and the ones that are farther away have lesser texture. And the other assumption we are making is that in most consumer images, uh, the object of interest or the things that are closer to the camera are towards the bottom of the scene. Uh, and the things that are uh, on the uh, top of the scene are actually farther away from the camera. So these are some strong assumptions we are making about the scene. But if our uh, scene fits into these assumptions, we are able to create uh, 3D models out of these. Now, uh, so uh, it's also possible to divide your image into multiple different layers, uh, depending on if you want to take out this assumption about uh, having objects at the bottom of the scene being closer. But for our cases, we were happy to have just, uh, we, were, we got sufficient performance by just doing this kind of uh, classification. So once we have uh, classified our training models into these three categories, uh, we take the average of all the depths of the images that we get in each of these categories. So we see that we get three different uh, kinds of depth images. And now once you have a test image, you again uh, take the same three regions take the total amount of gradient in each of these regions, and uh, that gives you a ratio of the amount of activity in each of these regions. So you take a linear weighted combination of these three depth images and create a scene model. So what this does is it tailors uh, a new scene model specifically for the scene that you're interested in. So for example, if you have a person standing in the scene towards the center of the image, that region would have much higher gradient than the other regions. So you can have a scene model which is closer to the one uh, where the center has more activity. So uh, depending on how the scene is formed, you can actually create a specific scene model for each of these uh, scenes. So once we have this, uh, these are all uh, just based on low-level features, which is gradients. Uh, so here is an example of how you would convert a given 2D image into a scene uh, like a depth map. So here I'm taking an example of a 2D scene. Uh, 
Uh, I use the model that I previously described to uh, 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 get a depth map out of there. So first what we do is we use a color and edge based uh, segmentation algorithm to segment the image into multiple different regions. And we take the centroid of each of these regions, look back at the scene model that we created for this particular image, and assign depth to each of these regions. Uh, so this is the depth map that you get using uh, the scene model that we had. Now this clearly has a very uh, distinct problem here. The fact that the face and the body has been given two different depth, because typically human beings wear different colored clothes and it's very, uh, it's more natural for segmentation algorithms to segment the face separately from the body. So we need some more higher level information here. Uh, so, and if you create a depth map using this, you would have this uh, effect of shearing where the person would be sheared from neck up and his body would be separate. So to overcome this problem, we had to add some high level features. Uh, <laughs> high level feature that we added was a face detection. So what we do here is we basically use a face detection algorithm, detect the face in the scene. And then we use the same uh, segmentation algorithm, but we over segment the objects in this scene. So now that we have multiple smaller segments, we find out all the regions uh, which have centroids that lie within this blue box. So we basically take the face, uh, we look at a slightly larger region, and combine all the segments that fall within that region. So that gives you a mask of the face. Now that you know where the face lies in the image, you assume that whatever is below the face uh, belongs to the body of the person. So you take the depth and enforce the depth for the face to be the same as the body so that the entire object or the entire person becomes one contiguous region. So this can overcome the problem of uh, shearing uh, neck up for people, human beings in the faces. And since we are targeting consumer images, this is a very common uh, image that falls in this category. Uh, the next high level feature that we considered was for outdoor images where there are sky and foliage in the scene. So uh, in this image here, uh, we use the same low level features based on gradient and we create a depth map where we see that uh, the depth looks very, uh, so in this case, the black regions are closer to the uh, camera and the white regions are farther away. So it shows that this particular uh, trees here are actually farther than the sky. So just using low level features, you're not able to identify how these depth can be uh, like assigned correctly. So what we did was we used scene classification. We figured out which regions in the images are sky, which regions are foliage, and which regions are the foreground and we enforce this on the depth maps. So now what we do is we ensure that the ordering is correct so that the sky is always the farthest object. Uh, the foliage falls between the sky and the foreground. And then on top of that, we again do the face detection uh, and we make sure that the entire person is one contiguous object and we create a depth map based on that. So uh, these are some high level features. There could be many more high level features added on top of this depending on the class of uh, images that you're trying to uh, address. Uh, so this uh, basically uh, is how we create the different depth maps. In the next slide, I will talk about uh, how, once you have a depth map, how do you create two different left and right views? So for this, we do something called the view synthesis. So here's an example of how view synthesis work. Um, you take an image, you again create the depth map that you wanted to create. And uh, to create a left and right uh, image for uh, the 3D image, you have to move objects around based on this depth. So if you see here, uh, for the left and the right image, these objects have been moved around within the image. But this creates a new problem of holes because of occlusion. Since you have moved the objects, you don't know what's behind the object. So we need to solve this problem as well before we can present it to the user. So now there are some very basic methods to uh, much more complicated methods. So I'll start discussing a few basic methods, show what their flaws are, and show uh, the solution that we propose for uh, view synthesis. So the first method is a very simple background interpolation. What this does is it just takes uh, pixels that are on one edge of the hole and just keeps extrapolating it towards the other end. Uh, this makes an assumption that the scene and the background of the scene is smooth. So if you have a smooth white wall or something very simple, you'll get a good performance. But if you have edges, like in this case here, you'll have these different kinds of artifacts. And since these artifacts will be different in the left and right image when you present it as an anaglyph, it starts creating very uncomfortable viewing experiences. Uh, here's another very straightforward method, which is uh, the mirroring. Basically, you just take a scene in the other side of the hole, and you just mirror it around and present it to the user. This, again, has its own artifacts. 
which will become very noticeable in 3D. Um, more commonly, what people do is they just use a low-pass filter on the depth map to smooth out all the regions. And this creates a much more cleaner uh, synthesized left and right views. But this also introduces a lot of geometric distortions. For example, if you see this particular region here, the pen has been uh, like distorted completely uh, because of the smoothing. And the issue here is that the left and the right images will have two different kinds of distortions. So this, again, will create a much more uh, displeasing view in the 3D image. So to overcome this, or rather to uh, circumvent this problem, what we propose is that we have to introduce distortions. There is no way around it, because you have holes. You need to fill those holes somehow. So what we are proposing is that we take all the distortions, keep the foreground regions, which is what the users are uh, more keen on viewing, for example, faces, and try and uh, push all the distortion in the background regions. So what we do is we keep the foreground regions just as it is, and we take all the warping or the distortions and warp the background. So in this case, you're pre-processing the depth map in such a way that the foreground remains clean, but all the distortions are being pushed towards the background. So you do see some distortions here, but your pen, which is the foreground, which is the first thing that users will notice, remains clean. Uh, so that's the basic idea of uh, warping and how you can actually uh, push the distortion, especially the geometric distortions to the background, which is not very noticeable to the user. So um, with that, uh, those are the main steps. And here I'm just trying to uh, summarize all the steps that I described so far. Uh, so we take a 2D image, which is our test image. We do a segmentation, uh, segmented into multiple different regions. And then based on uh, image cues like gradients and the training data we had, we assign some depth maps, uh, depth values to each of these regions. And then we use some uh, high-level features like face detection and uh, sky and foliage detection to enforce uh, the depth to make it a much more cleaner depth map. Once you have the depth map, uh, we use the warping method to get a cleaner uh, pre-processed depth map. And then we create two different views. Uh, in the next few slides, I have some examples for 3D images. Um, maybe if you have some glasses. So I've never tested this on the projector. Hopefully, these look fine here. Uh, so these are some examples of the depth map that we created for this scene. And uh, these are the 3D images that we see there. Uh, these are some more examples. So when I started working on this project, I got a lot of requests from people to convert their existing 2D images to 3D. So this was a friend of mine who asked to create a 3D image of his daughter's picture. Uh, this is my co-author, Umit. Uh, this is a picture of him as we are discussing how faces would be segmented independently from the body. Uh, here are some more examples. Uh, and this is the example of the image that we showed here. So that concludes my talk. Uh -huh. And so, uh, so what we did here was we uh, took some, some amount of high-level information. And uh, there are many different ways of incorporating higher-level information. So this is not a complete solution to 2D to 3D conversion, but this is just a step towards uh, making adding more features into our 2D to 3D conversion and getting 3D images from existing 2D images. So uh, with that, I conclude my talk. and.